I'm one of the women who I come in, I want to get my rocks off, mm -hmm. but I don't really talk to you outside of that. The truth be told is it's just easier. If a man is really interested in me, he's not going to let me just come in and get my rocks off and leave, right? He's going to try to take me out on a date. He's going to try to take it, pursue me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Reach out to me or whatever. And my friend was like, well, that's why you're single. You got to tell a man what you want. And I just feel like that's bullshit. If you want me, you're going to show me that. You're going to try to take me out. You're going to try to do that. If you want more than just sex or whatever like that, right? But then I get into this, this rut where I'm like... But I want more now. And I done been, and then he you like. You confusing me. So I know you, <laughs> I know you confusing the dudes you dealing with because you confusing me right now. Hello, Brooklyn. What's up? Someone done that with you before? Hello, Brooklyn. How yeah. you doing? Yeah, yeah, Okay, okay, okay. I had to make sure you knew. I had to make sure you knew. <laughs> Proper introduction. What to do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your day by day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y, do not X, Y, and today I have a great one for y'all because we are joined by actress Brooklyn, aka Marie Brooke. Hey, everybody. What to do? What's up? Like we said, uh, we were talked about earlier. I'm pretty sure that you got a lot of, are you from Brooklyn? I'm not going to lie. I was going to ask you that at first as well, but. <laughs> You're not from Brooklyn, right? No, I'm not from Brooklyn. Where are you from? I'm from Arkansas. Arkansas. <laughs> I would have never guessed from Arkansas. You ever met somebody from Arkansas? I have not. Exactly. A lot of people say that, though. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Little Rock is the only part of Arkansas I know. Yeah, I'm from this country-ass town called Pine Bluff. <laughs> The Pine Bluff, okay. Where it's rough. You saw banging in the bluff. No, y'all, uh, okay. y'all, y'all have a college, Arkansas Pine. Oh bluff. yeah, um, yeah, University of Arkansas. Yeah, mm -hmm. I played with somebody that played football there. Okay. 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 So yeah, yeah, Arkansas on the back. Arkansas. I'm on the over back. here talking about some banging. In the yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that? Is that like a? It's, it's like uh, this old gang banging movie uh -huh. that people like know Arkansas for, but. Mm -hmm. Anywho. So like the wire to Baltimore, the banging on a bluff to, I guess to so. Pine Bluff. I've never seen that side of Pine Bluff. But yeah. hey. Um how how long did you live in Pine Bluff growing up? I mean, I graduated high school from there, went to elementary, middle school, so pretty yeah. much You officially from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, move over to the ATL. So you went from Arkansas, Pine Bluff to Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. How did that happen? You know what? This is funny. So what what drove me what drew me to move into um Atlanta is Rich Homie Quan came to Arkansas and did a show. Mm -hmm. So long story short, by the end of the night I ended up in the car with them. Okay. Okay. You said with them? With like was him this... and you know everybody that's riding with him, so the manager, what? everything yeah. like that. Now, mind you, I didn't do nothing with him or nothing like that. He mm -hmm. was actually really respectful, so mm -hmm. he wasn't like I was like, how do I drop my dot, my dot, so that my friend can come get me with the woo? And he just showed me, but he was cool. We took pictures, whatever. And but I ended up being cool with his manager. Mm -hmm. Who a good friend of mine to this day, and but it just made me start looking into Atlanta, and I was into acting and all of that. So I was like, hmm. I was in the military, so I was overseas at the time, and I was like, I'm gonna move to Atlanta. So yeah. while I was overseas in Kuwait, I found my apartment online. Mm -hmm. Got I literally like paid for the apartment, everything. Yeah, and didn't before even, even looking before at before even looking at it. I was like, I'm moving to Atlanta. That's what I'm gonna do. And start occasion. And I'd never been to Georgia before. So I, I didn't even know what Atlanta looked like yeah. until I got there. Yeah. And I got my keys and it just worked out. So what year was this? It was like 2015, I think. 15. Yeah. Okay, so this was when Rich Homie was popping. Oh, yeah, he was popping. Rich Gang, Rich Homie. Yeah. Mama Sita, Rich Homie. I didn't even know who he was. I For thought real? I thought his song that he had, what was that song? Uh with with Doug or by himself? No, it was by himself. His breakout song. Uh, some type of way. Made me feel. So, I thought it was Future. For real. I okay. only went to the concert because everybody in my hometown was going. Mm -hmm. So I mean, shit. Yeah. I was like, oh. You know, they actually had like a beef for Tommy Kwan and Future. I didn't know that. They had a beef before because like 
one claimed that the other jocked the other style. Mm. I mean, case in point, you said you thought some type of way was future. Yeah, I thought that was him. I didn't know who Rick Tromaquan was. Yeah. I yeah. had never heard a song of his. Yeah. He actually made a diss track towards future. I forgot what it was called. Did he? But uh yeah. Yeah, I was a big Rich Homie and Thug fan in like 2015. Like that Rich Gang era, like that yeah. shit was magical. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you moved to Atlanta, um, 2015. So what was it like? Like, was it what you expected or what? It was slow. I feel like one thing about Atlanta is Atlanta is going to show you who you are, who you don't want to be, who, you, you know, it'll give you the uh, the the pathway to get to where you think you want to be. Mm-hmm. And you get there, you realize it ain't what it is. Mm-hmm. So with Atlanta, I feel like I just went through... A, I went to Atlanta with like this pipe dream idea of Atlanta. You know, I'm like my favorite movie, ATL. Mm-hmm. Like it's gonna feel like that, mm-hmm. and it was nothing like that. I think that's the case with a lot of yeah. black people that go to Atlanta. It's like back in like the 90s and early 2000s when people would go to Hollywood, yeah, to become aspiring actors or actresses, yeah. Like you know, within the past like 10, 15 years, you hear that story a lot as far as black people going to Atlanta mm-hmm. to find it. Because like you said, ATL, they see yeah. a lot of hip hop. Yeah, they, you listen to Rich Homie Quan. Someone could have listened to I don't know Thug and Future yeah. and thought the same thing. Mm-hmm. So they and I hear stories a lot. Of that, and when they get there, it's like eh, it's not really what I expected. You yeah. have to be on your P's and Q's. Like people will try to finesse you. It's love out there too, but people yeah, try to finesse sure. you as well. So, I mean, me, I'm the type I I can make it happen no matter where I go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm not even from Charlotte, and I came out here, and I, you know, what I'm saying I'm I'm proud of what I've done within the past two years of being out here. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Atlanta, like it seems like you just gotta you know sleep with one eye open, and I. Unless I don't have to, unless the bag is out there, I wouldn't want to go through that off rip. Honestly, it ain't no place like Atlanta. Yeah. I love Atlanta. Yeah. Like when I go and I'm out and whenever I'm out of town and I mm-hmm. come back and I touch down, I'm like, it feel good. Yeah. Like I love Atlanta. It's just you gotta really know you gotta find who you are because you will think you know who you are and then it'll take you through a whole pathway of finding yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's because you surround it with so much. And a lot of it is the difference between Atlanta and other places. Other places, you can kind of identify who got it and who don't. Okay. Atlanta, everybody look like they got it. Everybody mm-hmm. knows somebody, whether that's a celebrity, the hottest promoter, whatever. Everybody knows somebody. So you really don't even know who's who and what's what. Yeah. You got to really distinguish that. And it's like if you searching for the highlight, uh, of everything, you would be able to find it. You just got to ex- distinguish who is who. That's okay. what it is. And I feel like that's what people go looking for. Mm. They looking to be around the celebrities because everybody is out and about. Yeah, you I know, it's that. normal. Yeah. yeah, People want to be around the celebrities. People want to be in the mix. You know, you could pull up to a birthday party of, of like Future or um, Young Thug or something like that. Easy. You just find out where the invitation is. Mm. But the reality is, is it's just, it's not what it seems. It's yeah. not what it seems. And then you meet people and you get mm-hmm. to know who they really are. Yeah. You know, once you do get in the mix. And again, it's not what it seems. Mm. People ain't happy. People depressed. People mm. is broke. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. they lit though. Yeah. They lit though. Right. But they broke as hell. <laughs> right. It's all about being lit at the yeah. end of the day. That's all that it's matters. It's perception. It's perception. Yeah. Perception yeah. is reality. Yeah, it's a bunch of bullshit. Um. <laughs> All right, so we went from Arkansas Pine Bluff to Atlanta, and now we're here in Charlotte. How did that transition from Atlanta to Charlotte take place? Work. Work. Mm. It'll do it, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I be in Atlanta every week. Yeah. <laughs> I go back every week. Yeah. At first, I was driving. Now, I just take that 30-minute flight. Mm-hmm. And I got a house in Atlanta, so. Okay, so mm-hmm. when you go out there, you're good. Yeah. Uh, you own property out there? Or? I do. Really? Yeah, okay. so... I be gone. Yeah. It's boring here. But it's a good balance. I yes. like it here because here I'm more focused, like health wise, fitness wise, like yeah. it's calmer. I feel like it's like very family oriented vibes. Yeah. Like I could settle here. Yeah, very like emphasis on the family part. Charlotte is just enough city. Mm-hmm. It's not like, you know, I'm I'm used to, you know, I'm from Maryland back home, you know, we party in DC and whatnot. It's not D.C., mm-hmm. it's not New York City, it's not yeah. Atlanta, but it's just enough city to where people from those cities can be comfortable. Oh, mm-hmm. there's so many people from New York out here. It's insane. It? 
What? It's See, insane how I many New Yorkers out here. I haven't found the scene because I be going out and I'm like. Because you be in Atlanta. I don't know. Nah, I be. I I didn't try to go out. I'm mm-hmm. like I don't even see the bad bitches. I don't mm-hmm. see like. Excuse me. I don't want to call them bitches, but the bad bitches. I don't be seeing. I just don't be seeing. They it. be ducked off out here. It's okay. not like Atlanta where it's on Front Street. Okay. Out here it's more ducked off. It's so many different like and it's hidden joints. Okay. Like the baddest joints I've seen since I've been in Charlotte have been in Walmart and Publix. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Walmart and Publix is better than any club let out in Charlotte. Okay. I mean, the, the clubs out here are cool, but I don't go out no more just because I'm chilling in general right now. But mm-hmm. about a couple months ago, I went to Tampa mm-hmm. for a weekend and I went out in Tampa at Ybor City Yeah. and came back to Charlotte and I'm like, it's no point of going out out here. It's, it's just not, it's, it's nah. Yeah. It's funny because I was saying the other day, I feel like, <laughs> okay. I feel like when it comes to the men out here, what attracts men in Atlanta don't necessarily attract men here. The type of man that you might be looking for, like that home, family man, whatever. So I, I said the other day on my social media, I was like, when I like want a, when I wear classier stuff, mm-hmm. like you know, work attire, just you know, dressed up, I attract better quality men Mm -hmm. when i wear like trendy clothes you know like you know my tights looking out you know looking sexy looking good you know body body and whatnot right yeah i'm attracting the hood niggas i'm Mm -hmm. attracting the get money niggas the Mm -hmm. drug dealers all of that but i feel like here just made me realize like that ain't what i want you know what i'm saying like i want to elevate and i want to be on a different scale (laughs) you know and I like that about here. You can't, like, I like to go to certain spots like Crave. Mm -hmm. You got to actually dress up to come here. You can't just go there. You can't just, like, wear some tennis shoes and some sweats and walk in. I like that, though. It forces you to elevate. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Well, those dudes that you, the two different type of dudes that you say, you know, you would attract with based off of what you were wearing, Mm -hmm. do you think more so it was the... Uh, the men or the status of men or the intentions that you were attracting? I think it's the men. Mm. I think it's the men and the intention. Because regardless, I feel like man is man. I don't care if you classy and pretty or you ratchet and fine as hell. Mm -hmm. A nigga want to fuck. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what it is. They might want more with you, but they attracted physically to you before yeah. anything. So I feel like now the difference is what are they seeing you for, right? So like, okay, this is a wife. What are you going this, for? Exactly. So like, I'm shooting for wifey because even with the see hood niggas and shit like that, they want to be seen. A lot of times, majority, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say all, but they want to be seen. They want a bad bitch on their side. They outside. They, You know what I'm saying? Typically they want to be flashy, trendy. jewelry, exactly. nice cars, and nothing compliments your swag like a bad bitty. Exactly. They want to be trendy. They want yeah. a, a chick that's going to make them look good and shit like that. And then you got, you know, your man who you could actually... If if anything happened to him, mm-hmm. you actually got some money coming in because, yeah. you know, you can't file taxes on drug money. You can't yeah. file taxes on scamming money. So yeah. I'm like, you know, that type of man, he he like the, the chick that's got a tight clothes on and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But he probably ain't going to make you his wife, depending on what. It's a, little, it's, a, it's a little more uh, preconceived notions with that type of dude yeah. based off of the appearance. Yeah. Um, so he'll tread lightly based off of what he sees. I forgot to say this. Um, so on okay. this on this table right here, uh, we have y'all can't see it on the video. I think it's kind of hidden. We have a few okay. cards scattered out for icebreakers. So with these, at any point in the show, okay. it can be the most random time at all. You can be like, "Hey, I want to pluck an icebreaker. You pluck one." And then okay. the same for me. And since I brought it up, I feel I did. I just see you like kind of reach for one. Go ahead. I, I was- Let's get it. Say, let's do we it. We popping off. Let's get it. Okay. And we both have to answer it, by the way. I don't want to ask this one. You, that was the first one you picked well, up. Well, you, you know was... what? This good for you, <laughs> not me. Um, do you have a list of the people you slept with? Why don't you want to answer? Do you have a list? All right, I'll answer. <laughs> um, nah, I used to. But okay. then I was like, what's the point? You feel like the list just, it was going on and on? Uh... I think it was something that, mind you, this is years ago, mm-hmm. and the list was pretty 
So it, it wasn't crazy, but it was, you know. But um, sound crazy. I, like every here and there, like I would remember someone to be like, "Oh shit," and then add her to the list. Yeah. And then I was just like, "What the fuck is the point of this? <laughs> like, what, what 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 do I have to prove? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I think as men, as boys, you know, high schoolers, and maybe even college, it was about quantity. Okay. Now I'm quality. I'd rather, like, fuck some. Like, I'd rather get mine off. Like, maybe six times a year, but they just be some some fire yeah. ass a one shit than just running through hood buggers with you know what I'm saying walls blown up. Like, I I want some. Yeah. I want some good quality shit. So I was like, fuck it. What am I doing with this? I feel like in this era, though, a lot of people starting to feel like that. I feel yeah. like I feel like the tr- the BBL era and all of this. I feel like it's really it's making the insecure men show their insecurities, and it's making like. What do you mean by that? I feel like okay, this okay. This is how I feel, and I feel like this is about women too. Mm-hmm. I feel like women who don't have their body done always bashing women who got their body done. Oh, why would you want this and why would you want that and oh, men only want this and men only want that. But I'm just like, why do you care? Well, yeah, because typically women that are in the gym and have they you know body naturally right. together, they don't care because like what I got to care I'm already yeah right. and that's a good point it might be the women that you know maybe they would do it if they could if or they could or they so yeah. they bashing the women that got mm. their body done and stuff like that because mm. maybe they can't maybe you know what I'm saying it, it could be whatever it is but most they times be it's because they can't yeah. And, yeah. and it's making them insecure right because yeah. they feel like the men that they want want the women that look like that mm. you feel me so that's the only reason why you're speaking on it yeah. but I feel like I feel like even with the women, if you doing it for yourself, if you feel like, oh, men don't want this and men don't want that. Yeah, they do. You just got to find a man for you. Right. Just because a man and I've I've fallen trapped to this, too. I dated somebody who everybody that he dated was Mm. like BBL, Mm. like what you would identify as an Instagram baddie. Yeah. And for me, I feel like I was feeling like, okay, I know I look good. I know I'm fine. I know I'm the pretty around the way girl. Mm -hmm. But I think in my mind, I had like my own idea of what was beautiful. And when I was like looking at that image, I was like, oh, that's pretty. That's what I, you know, want to look like or what I wanted. So it always- The he used to mess with? Yes, you would say yes. that about his previous track record. But I'm not telling him that. I'm okay. thinking that, you know, okay. and I feel like it started showing out in our relationship, right? And I think I was making myself insecure and not realizing that the truth be told is that it don't even be about that. When when a man chooses you, like sometimes it be about that, but mm-hmm. other times you you'll see a man who all his women is Instagram baddies. Mm-hmm. But the woman he marry, mm-hmm. Ass flatter than pancakes, like again. That's why I said in earlier, it's all about the preconceived or preconceived notions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think oh, I hope I said that right because I really want to feel smart <laughs> right now. But yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, it's about what you want out of that shit. Yeah. Like if you want, if you, if he wanted you to, did he ever mention that he wanted you to look like them? No. You know he what I'm saying? Because he, no. he had I, me. I'm thinking he had a higher. A status in his mind of as far as where you were, mm-hmm. you were different for a reason. Yeah, he could have easily picked another chick that looked like them. Right, you didn't. That's for a reason. Right, you know what I'm saying. But people just have to realize that, like, women have to realize. You know what I'm saying. Really open up your eyes and see what it is he want with you, and then dudes. You know what I'm saying. I mean, act accordingly. Just keep it a buck with her. That's what I do. Women gotta love themselves. That's what it come down to. Everybody do. You know, because a man not loving himself might lead to him wanting only the joints with the fattest asses. Because yeah. if it's a joint that body probably ain't as curvaceous, mm-hmm. real or fake, then he's like, "Damn, that shit ain't gonna make me look good." Yeah, but I think that's what it. I feel like that's what I kind of learned from that situation is that you. I feel like a lot of our arguments really stemmed from my own insecurities. Mm. And insecurities that I created in my own mind. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think like because I had my own idea of what a person wanted or what a person was into, and the truth be told is, 
you don't even know what the reason a person was talking to such and such or right. whatever with you know what I'm saying you yeah. really just gotta love yourself and be confident in yourself mm -hmm. and that's gonna bring the right energy and the right people to you always but when you insecure about yourself and you not happy because I'm gonna tell you one thing that relationship did made me do is get my ass in shape. Yeah. And and and, it, and I love that about during it. During or after the relationship? After. After. Yeah, like Why not during? Why do y'all wait? Okay, let's so, do it. No, 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 <laughs> no. Let's talk about it. Why during the relationship y'all get the happy weight? Yeah. But then when y'all break up, that's when y'all want to hit the gym and tone the body up. Well, you know what? I feel like it's just the best revenge. Like, right? So maybe in the in the midst of that that relationship, like maybe I was in the works of trying to get myself together. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, trying to start eating right and stuff like that. But you know, the results take time. So now I'm going harder. You know what I'm saying? Because for one, I'm the catch. I'm the catch. And I'm and I then at that point I was realizing that. I'm like, Afterwards, you realized it. I was, yeah, because in the midst of it, with during this person, the, but during you're the catch, you're the catch as well during Brooklyn. I am, and you, you know, know you know, the problem was hmm. the problem was is that because he was so he was in a more high pro profile status, mm -hmm. and the women that he had dated before were more in a high profile status. Mm -hmm. I felt like. Damn, and then I lost my track, my train of thought. Yeah, <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. No, but I felt like um I lost my train of thought. We'll get back to it. Hold okay. on, first and foremost, you didn't even answer the icebreaker. I wasn't supposed to. Yeah, we both gonna answer them. No, no, that's not how it go. Yeah. You gotta pick a card. Okay. <laughs> All right, so so it's just one way. All right, you said it. You said it. Well, I, can... I don't, I don't want to answer. All right, we can go by it. Okay. Um and we'll and we'll we'll circle back to that. Mm -hmm. So Upon doing some research on you, I do my research. Oh, Lord. I do my homework. <laughs> you don't have a whole lot out there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I, listen, I thought I did a good job. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, you don't have a whole lot <laughs> okay. out there. Like, it's, I'm not saying, you know, in a bad okay. way, but I did do my research. Okay. And um, I'm on your Instagram, and I noticed that Snoop Dogg follows you. Okay. How did that happen? That came from Clubhouse. From Clubhouse? Yeah, Clubhouse. I was in a room with him one time, and I think he was just following all the ladies that he felt like was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really where it came from. Honestly, I didn't even notice that he was following me until like maybe like a month after because I went to his page one time. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I followed him anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, and it said that he was following me, and I was like, oh, shit, Snoop Dogg following me. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's dope. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. So he was in a in a in a club room and just see a whole bunch of beautiful joints and followed him. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it be. Yeah. <laughs> I like. Yeah, we was having good conversation, vibing, and I think Wiz Khalifa came into the room mm -hmm. and they was doing like they sessions where they playing like music and everything mm -hmm. like that, and we was just sitting there looking pretty. Yeah, like I I'm at the point now, where like I get a few followers every day. Yeah. I looked on. Um, Oh shit, she looks straight. Let me. Yeah. Damn. damn, she looks straight. Damn, she's straight. Let me follow her back. It'd be like that. I ain't gonna lie. I am not gonna lie. Cause I mean, I don't like following a lot of people on IG anyway. Cause yeah. like I don't even know all these people. Mm -hmm. And then I gotta search through a whole bunch of shit on my feed just to find my people that I really know. Right. Like yeah. I don't be crazy about that shit. But no, I feel that. Um. Also on your Instagram recently, you posted a video of a scene. You're an actress, like we said in yeah. the intro. Um, could you just talk about that a little bit and, you know, what happened with that? Yeah. So with, <laughs> with that scene, it's funny because the person that I was acting with, mm -hmm. he has the exact same birthday as me. Nice. Which is? January 11th. Okay. And Capricorn? Capricorn. Nice. Mm -hmm. And it was like great, like chemistry. Mm -hmm. of, let me tell y'all something. I don't know how the hell people be doing some of these scenes and not end up fucking. Cause yeah, <laughs> so when y'all, I feel like when y'all had that kiss. But no, we didn't. We didn't. We I'm did. I'm not it. saying you <laughs> fuck. I'm saying, but you you felt the chemistry is what you're saying. But that it, was a juicy ass kiss. I heard it. I was like, damn. <laughs> it felt natural. Me. Yeah, it felt natural. Like, but I have done. I have done a film where um, a TV show where. Mm. 
I did a love scene and a kiss scene. And after the actor, he was like, I know you felt that. Like, he was actually married at the time. Mm. His wife was there mm. with us. She wasn't on set, yeah, but yeah. she was there at the yeah. hotel. And he hit me like later on. He found me on Facebook. Yeah. He hit me later on and he was like, you know, I could I didn't want to say anything at that time, but I know you felt that and shit like that. And I was like, No. Mm. I didn't. I was like, like I didn't feel anything. That on that time it was professional. It was, it was just strictly perfect. To be yeah. honest, I was ready for it to be over. We mm. was doing it over and over, and what, I was just like, "What do you mean man. by love scene? Like sex scene? Yeah, like kissing. Like mm. it was, it was an implied sex scene. So it's like you kind of touching in certain spots okay. and things like that to make it look like mm. you are doing more than what you're doing. So like, what goes behind that as far as like um, protection wise, not physical protection, but like. You know, like, is it like some type of agreement you have to come to before scenes like that? Is it like someone on set that kind of, you know, goes over everything, stipulations? Like, how does that work? It depends on how, it depends on how intimate the scene is. So, okay. like, I wasn't butt naked or right, nothing like right. that. So, you know, at that time, they be having, like, the penis is, like, strapped on. Mm -hmm. You can't see it, but it's, like, a, a tight-ass thing on your penis. So, the the eyes of you erecting is like slim to none. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and then they have like stunt coordinators when it comes to like such sexual stuff mm. and they lock down the set. So if you knew and stuff like that, yeah. it's not going to be like no, nobody but the camera crew and yeah. all of that in there. So that sounds high pressure. Yeah, I could. I don't, I don't know if I could get hard on that. <laughs> so. You know, it's not high pressure when you and the person have had conversations and got okay. comfortable with each other. So, like. It, it come natural when y'all didn't have conversations and got comfortable. Now, I have had a scene where me and the person had really just, like, met on set. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have no prior conversation. So, I was trying. He actually initiated. And he was like, let's go over, like, little things to try to get comfortable with each mm -hmm. other. And for the life of me, that man was so fine. Mm -hmm. I was like, I couldn't stop smiling. Yeah. I was like, God damn. But when it came to that part, it was awkward as fuck. Uh, it was so beforehand, awkward. when y'all were like, you know, going over the yeah. initiation, it was cool. You was, yeah, I was, was like, he was looking me in my eyes and yeah, I was like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then on camera, it was. <laughs> on camera, on. it was awkward as fuck. He was more awkward on camera than off camera. Mm. Like on, off camera, he was smooth selling. But yeah. on camera, when the camera started rolling, he was yeah. mad stiff, mad yeah. like. Because it's set in mentally that the camera's on. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the more recent one that you more so did enjoy. Was it only one take? The kissing scene. I think we did maybe like three takes. But we yeah. had knocked it out really okay. for real. But the, the different take, the other takes was like for angles. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we... Yeah, if I'm in a kissing scene, I'm trying to run it back a yeah. few times. I ain't going to lie. I would mess up a line on you purpose know, and we, all that. We had conversation. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I was like... Uh, what you doing? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, have, did y'all talk afterwards or did y'all keep it where it was? We conversed, but it yeah. didn't go no further than that. Got you, got you. That's what's up. Yeah, it did sound juicy. I was like, oh, all right. Mm -hmm. How'd you get into acting? How did I get into acting? I don't even remember how I got into acting. Who it was were, just always something I wanted to do. Who were some of your early influencers or role models? Uh, I love me some Gabrielle Union. I love her and I love when she be talking too. I love how authentic she is. Yeah. Like even when she talking about her situations with her man and stuff like that, I feel like I like it that she keeping it real. Yeah. Because if I'm being honest, a lot of men be into the shit that she be doing. So Oh, like being the more dominant type? A lot of think about it. Most black women are mm -hmm. extremely dominant. Mm-hmm. They are used to leading, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you got some that don't come off that way, but behind closed doors, that's how they are. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is that she is out in the open and being herself and she's yeah. not trying to hide who she is. Yeah. And she got a man who don't mind her being who she is. So mm -hmm. I like that. So is D-Way the sucker for being the more submissive one in that relationship? No. No? No. He's... I mean, you got you got people who just align with you. Mm -hmm. Maybe he don't want to be the dominant one. Like, maybe he don't want... You know what I'm saying? People... Some people, like, it's no different than men who are, like, CEOs of companies and stuff like that. They don't... They go to dominatrix and stuff like that, and they get 
degraded and shit like that because they so used to being dominant everywhere yeah. else. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. So when they come home, some men like that, like mm-hmm. take control. I don't even feel like dealing with this. I'll pay the bills, but mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Do your thing. So I feel like that's Well, here's the dilemma with that because that being said, I don't know about Gabrielle Union, but mm-hmm. a lot of women at the same breath will say that they look at their man as a bitch. When he kind of gives her the, you know, the steering wheel to take control and drive everything. Let me ask you, would you mind that? A dude that lets you take control of it. You don't seem as much of a more so dominant woman just off of our, you know, conversation. Mm -hmm. But even regardless, if it was a man that wasn't as dominant as you, you know, uh, imagine or would like him to be, he still wants you to be the more dominant in the situation. Would you be cool with that personally? Fuck okay. no. Hell okay, no, 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 no. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. It just depends. See, I'm I'm more aggressive in my in my talk and stuff like that. Anyway, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. just that's who I am. Mm-hmm. I know I come off a little bit sweeter mm-hmm. than what I really am, but the truth be told is, I could I could go there. You know what okay. I'm saying? And so, <laughs> when it comes to my men, I don't mind. I really don't mind like. You know what? I'm going to be honest. You was not with that shit. I be saying that I don't mind. Even when we go to the 50-50 stuff, mm-hmm. I be like, oh, I don't care about my man paying 50-50. I, don't, I mean, going 50-50 with my man and stuff like that. But the truth be told is I'm fucking tired. I want to be a woman. I want to sit back and let my man do his thing. But I don't want to be a stay-at-home mom and no shit like that because I want to feel like I got my own. So then what do you want to be? I just want to be. I want to work man. and not feel like I got to work. So you want to work, but don't feel like you got to work. Right. So if I so want to part time, what you be like work work part time? What what does that mean? Or do you no. want to work for your husband's company and it's just not as? I want I want my man to take care of me mm-hmm. and his family, mm-hmm. and but I I like having my own. Like I just like having my own. I don't want to feel like a person. I always say this: a person can add to my life, but they can never take away from me, right? So they can. I own a house. I own a car. I have another car. You know, a person can upgrade my house. A person can upgrade my car. A person can do all these things, but they can never take those things from me. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So like, as far as a place to lay my head, a play, a, a car to drive. Mm-hmm. Now it may not be the goddamn. Ashton Martin, mm-hmm. it might I might have to drive a Hyundai because yeah. that's the one that I own. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But you ain't gonna leave me walking. So you don't mind if a man upgrades your life? I don't mind that. But you don't want him to completely take you away from your life. I don't want to feel like yeah. On. You don't okay? Like in the midst of it, I want to have some independence. I don't want my life to revolve around him. I mean, it doesn't have to. Re- okay, so then what does what does he get? He get taken care of. The kids get taken care of. But the you house don't want to revolve around. Of. Okay, so you said him, the kids, and the house get taken care of. It's but balance. You don't want to revolve around him. It's balance. So what I'm if a mom. the okay? So what if the amount of taking care okay. that is required from him, the house, and the kids is a little more than you would want to give? I don't know. We're gonna have to figure that out. Yeah. I think. I don't know. I you getting confused. it all. You yeah. getting you getting you getting an upgrade. You I know what I mean? Like, you getting the Aston. I feel like honestly, like I do a really good job of balancing my life. Like mm-hmm. I travel, I solo travel, mm-hmm. I travel with friends. I'm a mom. I do that. I knock that out. And I'm a career woman and I do really well in my career. Mm-hmm. I travel for job my job sometimes and I balance it and I do a good job of it. So, so uh, going back to when I asked, you know, if you could, ha- if you would have a dude that ain't as dominant or, you know, um, just uh, no, money wise and man. whatnot. So it sounds like what you want doesn't really. It sounds like what you want. Mm-hmm. Cool. A lot of women get that, but what you want to give or lack of, I should say, because you don't want to really give it all. Right. That's like a requirement for the type of women that receive what you want, it sounds like. It is. And you know what? The truth be told is I got to I gotta learn. And I feel like a lot of women need to learn how to just be a lady. Would you want to, would you mind being a mistress? 
I would, man. You said you would? Yeah. Or wouldn't? I would. I asked because that's what it sounds like what you want. Okay. So I have a friend, right? Mm -hmm. And I get into, like, I'm one of the women who I come in, I want to get my rocks off, mm -hmm. but I don't really talk to you outside of that. And Wait, then, is this you or your friend? This is me. Okay. All right. This is me. So for me, I come in, I get my rocks off, and I don't really contact you outside of that for real. Okay. Most people will say something to me. Oh, you don't seem you seem like the only time you call me is for this or for that. But mm -hmm. the truth be told is it's just easier. Like I feel like if a man is really interested in me, he's not gonna let me just come in, get my rocks off and leave, right? He gonna try to take me out on a day. He's gonna try to take it, um, do pursue me, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Reach out to me or whatever. And my friend was like, Well, that's why you single. You gotta tell a man what you want. And I just feel like that's bullshit. I feel like that's a toxic ass thing because this is how I feel. If you want me, you're going to show me that. You're going to try to take me out. You're going to try to do that. If you want more than just sex or whatever like that, right? You gonna, But then I get into this, this rut where I'm like, but I want more now. And I done been, and then he you like. You confusing me. So I know you, <laughs> I know he confusing the dudes you're dealing with because you confusing me right now. I don't know. So you go into the situation just liking to get yours off and you kind of moving on them. I go, no, I go into the situation going off they vibe and they energy. If you're not taking me, okay, I like you. Okay, well, let's talk about the, okay. the situation where you said like more so you like to, even you like him, I'm not saying in love, mm -hmm. you like a dude. But you're more so, you like to, you know, get yours off and kind of, you know, keep it moving. Talking yeah. about this situation. Okay. Right? But at the same time, you like this dude and you want him to show more interest in you. Mm -hmm. And you want that to happen by him applying pressure after y'all, you know, you have sex and you kind of, y'all don't really talk as much mm -hmm. outside of that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what a nigga like me is going to do in that situation. Okay, tell me. The same thing that any animal any form of life has done from the beginning of time to now to keep them alive uh -huh. they adapt so i'm gonna okay. adapt so what i'm gonna do is even if i do like you if i see how you moving yeah like we have a good time around each other but outside you're not really as social cool yeah i'm gonna cut off them feelings but keep enough feelings to the point where we can still have a good time when we do link up yeah. and then i'm gonna keep it moving and give the rest of those feelings to another girl that will show that appreciation off bucks like your friend said, I think of Bucks, if it's a dude that you like, yeah. then that needs to be shown first. Don't do the shit where you kind of nonchalant first and then expect him to chase you. Nah, a real nigga just going to be like, all right, fuck it. We're going to adapt no matter how much See, we like the shit. that's my problem. Because that's how dudes get fucked up. That's my problem. Because they go into a situation like that, mm -hmm. seeing what it is, and they try to give too much and then wonder why they getting played. Yeah, I feel like that's my problem. He said that's why I'm single. And the man that I was dealing with told me that's why I'm single too. And I was like, damn, I need to figure this shit out. Cause I'm not going to lie. You move like a nigga. I, <laughs> Have you heard that before? Yeah. You move I like a nigga. I hear that a lot. Yeah. I hear that a lot. But yeah. it's just like, for me, I really feel like if you want me, you're going to show me that you want me. Any mm -hmm. man that has wanted me, show me that they wanted me. Mm -hmm. They pursue me. They ain't allow me to not talk to them. They ain't really allow me. You know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. was applying pressure. So if you really feeling me like what that What was the real, highest end goal out of these men that you said showed that they wanted you? I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. The the man who taught me really for real, for real, what, what love looked like, mm -hmm. he just got married not so long ago. But the reason why we didn't work out is because he was broke. Mm. And I, let, let me tell you something. Well, his wife now is fine with that. Let me tell y'all something. she got the ring. There is a man out there who will worship the ground you walk on. When I say worship the ground you walked on, he, he worshiped the ground I walked on. But. And he taught me patience. And he taught me, he really taught me how to damn near love me. But. Taught me how to cook. But but he just, I got to the point where I was like, I don't care if you drop, if he was chasing a dream of being a musician, mm -hmm. he wanted to be a singer mm -hmm. in a boy group. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm, I was supportive. I supported that everything, but I'm like, you do have, he had two kids mm -hmm. 
And I'm just like, you do need to support yourself. Like, you need to make some type of money. He was getting, like, a $50, $100 allowance from his manager. Mm -hmm. And she, when she was mad, $50. Mm Do you feel me? Like, I was like, you got to drive a piece of her at night. I don't care. So is he still trying to chase this uh, musician dream? Mm -hmm. He just found the woman for him. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It yeah. sounds like it. So it sounds like she's gonna, regardless, she's gonna hold him down, and he's yeah. probably worship worshiping the ground that she walks on, like he did with you. Yeah. Now let me ask you this: Would you rather? Okay, so it didn't work out financially wise. Everything else, if he if he but had the money, would it have worked out? If I, yes. Okay. It would have, and if I would have met him today, mm-hmm. it would work out. What's the difference? The difference is I was broke too at the time. Mm -hmm. Like I was barely making it by myself. And so I was like, I feel like I don't want a man in my house. And we both, like, I just, that don't make my vagina wet. You Uh feel me? Like that don't make me, that don't turn me on. That make, Okay, so now since you're, you know, you're you're pretty, uh, you know, um, good for yourself. Yeah, financially. You're saying now you, it would have worked. So you're saying you would have, you wouldn't in mind supporting him. Now I could appreciate the love that he brings, but I still don't want him to be broke. Okay. I'm sorry. I just can't. I but what if, what if he said, but it's everything with him is still going to be the same. You have money now, but everything with him is still going to be the same. You so know what? Then maybe I lied. I, I know you lied. I was ready to pull it out of you. Because this, this this goes back to when you were saying that you couldn't be with a nigga that's not dominating I over do, you. I, I can't. And, the, and the, I don't want a man that's... You are right. I do not want a man that's not dominant. You know what? I go out into the world and I'm a mom and I carry the weight of the world on my goddamn shoulders uh-huh. every single day. I just want to come home and feel like I got a man that could just take that off of me. I want to be a woman. I don't want to be hard. I don't want to feel like, you know, I got to be perfect. I just want to come home be loved, be taken care of, and I'm gonna give you the same in return. Well, let's do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, my thing is this: even this goes back to the Gabrielle Reun- Gabrielle Union mm-hmm. thing. Every lioness wants to be tamed. I don't care how right? loud she fucking exactly. roars. I don't give a fuck. Exactly. Everyone wants to be tamed. Even when we get well, we, we ain't gonna go down that rabbit hole. But <laughs> okay, you saying you want to just come home, be loved, and all that shit. So let's do this because I haven't found him in your previous example. So okay. let's build the perfect man for that. Let's start with, I don't think physical really matters as much to y'all. Um, even though you're someone that yeah, no, works out a lot, does he have to, you know, be Mm-mm. someone? Fit? Okay, so yeah. scratch that. So then create for me the ideal man that you see that can uphold that position. The ideal man for me is, <sighs> damn, he got money. That We're going to start there. Yeah, because... we know that. Yeah. That's where I'm, that's yeah. you talking about some if Murray dude was here today. Yeah, the fuck right. You would be bitching him. <laughs> he gotta have money. He mm-hmm. gotta um be God fearing. Mm-hmm. He gotta be somebody who doesn't let me run over him. Mm-hmm. And he also he has to be family oriented. Cause I have kids. He has to be Adhere to my love language, words of affirmation, gift giving. That's my thing. And I I, I apply that in return. Mm -hmm. And um, he also has to be somebody who like stimulates my mental. I feel like everybody that I meet and I date, I'm always stimulating them and building them Mm -hmm. and, you know, elevating them. And I'm like, damn, I want to learn something too. Mm -hmm. Introduce me to something different. You know what I'm saying? Elevate me. And that, that I feel like that would be my ideal man. Have you met anyone closer to this uh, yet at any yes, point? Yes, and I ain't shit, y'all. I be calling him lame as hell. And I appreciate your honesty. Well, why do you, why do you call him lame? Because you know what I don't like about him? He actually older. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you, he actually older. And well, if you most see men this, that would fit that criteria that you just laid out would be older. older. You know, I mean, you're not gonna find a but 23 year old him, like that. I'm going to tell him, if you see this, I'm going to tell you what the problem is. The problem is... <laughs> <laughs> hey, go ahead and get this shit off. <laughs> the problem is, is I told you I like things. I like trips and stuff too, but I like things. And you ain't bought me nothing. You took me to some nice dinners, and you done flew me out and put me in some nice hotels that I could put myself in. But you won't buy me nothing. And I don't like that. 
You got me flowers for my birthday. And that was not okay. And they look like get well soon flowers. What the hell wrong with this man? Sent get well soon flowers to the damn restaurant. Were y'all in a relationship or were y'all just messing around? No, we ain't even had sex yet. But this is the problem. This is why. Uh -huh. This is why. And he also, the thing about him is also, I'm going to tell you, the thing about you is also, you be trying to act like you don't want to, you ain't into having sex and you ain't worried about all that. But every time we talk, you make some type of sexual reference. I don't like that. And this is Red why flag, I feel. gentlemen, never do that. Can I, can I, can okay, I intervene ahead, right quick? Ahead. I'm not talking to him because I mean he's older, so he he's <laughs> he's already the master of his own book. But I don't this know is if for, I want to put that in though. I was talking about. <laughs> no, that's cool because I'm I'm gonna put this in. This is for you know twenties teenagers, whoever, young men tuning in that just you know they 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 haven't found that 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 walk in their life yet. Mm -hmm. Like she said, dude, we'll bring it up anytime they talk. Let me tell y'all something. Never bring up sex first with a chick. That shit's dead. Never. Why? Because you're you're ruining the excitement. They want they want to they want their minds to wander and imagine and all this shit. And you're ruining it by bringing up sex, sending dick pics. I be hearing niggas be doing that, sending unsolicited dick pics. Like, come on, y'all. Don't bring that shit up at all. The first date, second date, never bring it up until the point where like a boiling pot. That bubbles up and the pot pops off with her. That's what you want to do. You want it to marinate. If you bring it up, you simmering it down. By not bringing it up, all you're doing is turning the heat up more and more for her ass to the point where she can't hold it in and she's going to explode it on you. But um, I'm telling y'all, am I right or wrong? Yeah, you're right. But the thing is, the rules don't apply to, to young niggas. I'm going to tell you why. Depend. Depend on what type of young nigga he is. Yeah, as I say, it depends on how he if is. He it depends get on money his young nigga. Then he can kind of he get he Man, get a little more it leeway. Ain't, it ain't it ain't even money. It's confidence. If you're talking young dudes, like yo, I I done, I don't rode a '92 Accord, hopping out with Nike slides on, and it don't matter because the way I am is the way I am, and the confidence always been but, there. But you know what? I wish I was drinking right now. <laughs> Not really. I'm gonna cool. make the conversation juicier. Yeah, it would, but it's okay. It's flowing regardless. It is. It's doing Th great. You're doing good. This is actually a perfect time for icebreaker. Okay. Ha 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 ha. Oh god. This is a good one. Yeah, go ahead and take your drink. Well, I mean, all right. you ready? Mm -hmm. Have you ever faked an orgasm? Mm hmm. Yeah. Do y'all do that often? I do it often. Tell a story. I can't even tell the story, to be honest, because this person might see this podcast, so mm. I can't even say it. But I have had situations where, like, the benefits of faking the orgasm were very high, so... How does that even work? What do you mean by that? I can't even say <laughs> The benefits of faking it mm -hmm. were beneficial? Depending on what type of nigga you're dealing with. Okay, so I'm guessing stroking his ego, you get rewarded for that? You do. All right. Mm -hmm. So why not um why not tell him what can get you there to really get you there? Because sometimes it just ain't big enough to even get you there. Damn. It's just what it is. Yikes. So I'm gonna make you feel good though. Mm. And you know, sometimes sometimes in certain positions it feels a little bit better. You feel me? Like which ones? I had somebody pull their penis out and that shit was the size of a pinky. I think my pinky was a little bit long. Erect? Erect. Yikes. That must be fucked up, yo. I was disgusted. I couldn't believe his dick was that small. And you Did know- Did y'all proceed? Uh, no. Mm. I had to use the bathroom and realize that my stomach was hurt. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, that shit was crazy I've never seen a grown ass man And he was skinny Okay We all know women We all know that skinny men You know they always come with that hammer But This man mm -hmm. Shit I don't know what He had to be in a he um, might, it might have been, I don't know, it might have been something diagnosed. I think it's something called like a micro, micro penis. That's a real thing. Uh, he, was, he was diagnosed. So back to the faking an orgasm. I mean, I, why do it? 
Um, cause it make your man feel good. Yeah. So I, guess. I want him to feel good. So how so how do you fake it? Body language, verbally, like how do you fake an orgasm? Verbally, the yeah. moaning and shit. Cause you don't really know if I'm coming or not. I'm mm. just. So him. you'll say I'm coming. You'll tell him I'm coming. That's your way of faking it. No, Uh I know how I really do when I mm-hmm. orgasm. Right. So I do that. So you go through that. Yeah, I go okay. through that whole emotion. I am an actress, so yeah, it works well, out. You can't fake. You can't fake the contractions. That's one thing you can't. Fake. You can't fake that, but I mean, you you do that on your no, own. I, no, no. Oh yeah, yeah. Some can, yeah. yeah. Some can, no. Some can. Yeah. Now I was saying you can't fake that. You can't fake the 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 shaking, like the tiny shaking. I mean, you can fake it, but I don't know. I think you could tell, like, if you're faking yeah, the shaking or whatnot. Shaking. Yeah, ain't nobody shaking. Ain't nobody fake shaking. Because truthfully, fake shaking is crazy. Truthfully, with shaking, that should come and go. Really, mm-hmm. that don't be a every time thing for nah, us. So. Nah, yeah, it's it's always different. Yeah. One one time might be the shaking. One time might be the she loses her breath and you think she about to pass the fuck out. Yeah. One time the shit might be contracting. One time she might squirt. It's, yeah. Yeah. I've had a time where I was like squirting back to back and mm-hmm. then out of nowhere I just stopped. Yeah. So I mean, and we was doing it the exact same way. So yeah. I mean. yeah. It's 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 all subjective. It is all subjective. Mm-hmm. Damn. Um. I had I had notes. I guess we can. I wanna I wanna do a segment right quick. Okay. Let's switch it up just a little bit because we're going to circle back to what we're talking about. Okay. So with you being an actress and whatnot, mm-hmm. uh, behind the scenes earlier, you brought up Have I Seen Crooklyn? Yeah. I have not, unfortunately. Don't pull my black card because I know that that <laughs> is a hood classic movie. It is. It is. You know my favorite line? Hmm. Okay. Do y'all know when he was in the stairwell, he was in the stairwell and his lights went out mm. because the man didn't pay the bill. And he mm. was like, I need my lights. I can't eat, can't sleep, can't think without my lights. <laughs> that was a good voice. <laughs> that was a good one. I could, I, I, I literally like, imagined that. That was definitely someone that was complaining I was heavy. dying laughing. He was in a hard like, place right there. <laughs> that's like the ultimate thing that... So you appreciate your uh, your hood movies, your hood classic movies. I mean, my black card could be pulled because I just see Love Jones into this year. Really? Yeah. But you've seen it this year. Yeah. Good. Cause yeah. what we're gonna do is we have for Miss Brooklyn, aka Marie Brooke, okay, the actress herself. We have a segment called This or That. Okay. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to lay out two things. You have to choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. So this is this or that hood movies. Classic hood movies. Okay. However you want to fucking call it. All right. First, The Players Club or Set It Off? Mm, Set It Off. Set It Off? Yeah. The end, man. That shit was so sad. Baby Boy or ATL? ATL. Yeah. No ATL. Yeah, you were talking about it. <laughs> I know that word. I know that movie word from word. This my daddy house. <laughs> I've been running shit since so I was. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite uh, character in ATL? I like Nunu. Yeah. I like Nunu. Yeah, I and I love when he was like, "You really want to be ghetto? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got a Picasso in your <laughs> house? Your spaz that man, on him. That man was pissed off. Yeah, he spaz on him. I like Big Boy. Oh yeah! It's like, bah! <laughs> Got your ass shaking like a stripper. Tighten up. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. He, oh, when he was telling the story outside of the car, it's like I woke up the next day, one of my footies was off. That's my nigga. I fuck with big boy. All right, Friday or don't be a menace. Don't be a menace. Mm. Yeah, fuck that. That's a tough one. Poetic justice or juice? Shout out to Tupac. Poetic justice. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. That is a nice movie. Nice little how they went from like, you know, bickering to falling for one another. Uh, a black love story. Yeah. Is that good or bad? It's good. I mean, I want black love. Yeah. We'll get to, we'll get back to that. Okay. Speaking of black love and the word love. Okay. Final one. Mm-hmm. Love Jones or love and basketball? I'm going to go with love and basketball because I can relate more to love and basketball. How so? Like the whole dating somebody and you dating him at a certain point in life, it don't work out. And then Mm -hmm. later on, you come together and it just, it's like, this is where you knew you should have been all along. And, you know, typical. So so do you believe in that, spinning the block? 
Mm-hmm. Have you spun the block? Mm. You know what? I wanted to spin the block recently. But honestly, he had did something so fucked up to me that honestly my conscience just wouldn't let me spin the block. Yeah. But I was only trying to spin the block because I was getting lonely. Mm. It wasn't because, like, when I look back on some of the shit he he didn't did or said and stuff like that, I'm just like, ugh. A lonely mind can make you, uh, you know, look over some certain things that remind you of the reason that you're lonely in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I feel like also, too, like, even going back to men being like, oh, you got to say what you want and things like that. I feel like men do too. I feel like a lot of times when women and men get into a relationship, they expect women, women naturally fall into a role, right? We naturally just start caring after you, cooking for you, cleaning for you. Like, Y'all don't really, naturally. Black we, women today don't naturally no, fall No, no, for role. real, for real though, if we really feeling you for real mm -hmm. and you inviting us over to your crib and shit mm -hmm. like that, we going to clean up eventually. We going to start doing all these things. Yeah. Like, it's just a natural response. But even, let's just say even in a dating situation, right? Y'all, we start carrying y'all weight with us. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. a lot of times we just lose ourselves in the midst of it. But I think, like, I feel like black men got to realize that as women, like, we be trying to figure out how to love just like y'all. A lot of us come from, like, mothers who were single mothers who didn't have no man. What they teach you, be independent. You don't need no man because they broken. They hurt. You know what I'm saying? They didn't went through all these things. And it's like... And then on the side with the dude, he see that from his mom. He never yeah. saw anyone truly, you know, love his Loving mom. Him. So he don't know how yeah. to... It definitely works both ways. Yeah, and, and that's I agree. What, and that's what people fail to realize. Like, as far as, like, with, uh, you know, this whole, like, gender war between mm. black men and black women... Y'all got like we gotta realize that's what the fucking opposition wants. Yeah. Like we are literally like aiding to the opposition by doing this shit. Like yeah. um, but go ahead. Uh, yeah. But I think like a man, I feel like women give men a little more leeway. Like y'all get way more chances than we do. You know what I'm saying? To fuck up, to get it right, to fuck up again and get it right. But y'all don't really give us that grace. Like y'all feel like, oh, this is what a woman should do, but I'm learning what a woman should do. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to relearn all of those negative things that I was taught when I was growing up because I'm from a bitter single mom. And then mm -hmm. let's say that I'm not saying that that's what I'm from, but I'm just saying like yeah, a lot of women are yeah, from. Yeah. And let's say as an adult, your mom get married. Mm -hmm. Right. And now she's seeing life totally different. And she's trying to tell you that. That ain't how you supposed to think. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to think like this now. You're supposed to think like that. So I feel like what men got to do also and consciously try to do is give women grace like we're trying to figure it out trying to learn how to love trying to learn how to you know what i'm saying be this and be that and at the same time figure out who we are yeah you you add kids to the mix mm -hmm. being an at-home mom is a full-time goddamn job yeah I got to take care of you. I got to take care of the house. I got to take care of kids. And we all know that kids is a goddamn headache. Yeah, Let's be imagine. real. Um, a headache. <laughs> so as far as you saying like dudes are as lenient with women when it comes to that, I think one of the things is that we realize that's not going to be an overnight transition. Right. As far yeah. as y'all learning the other side. So it's like, why not, you know, go to someone else who gets it right away? You know what I'm saying? Now, again, that's... But again, I mean, you could go to someone who gets it right away because maybe they was brought up in a different household yeah, or yeah. maybe they just some people were brought up in and fucked up household, but just grew in a fucked up household, but just grew different values from mm -hmm. whatever that they pulled that from. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but you could. But a lot of times that's easier said than done because the person that you love, you know what I'm saying? The person that has all those great qualities could have a dull ass personality that just doesn't match. You just she's a great woman, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't feed what you need, you know what I'm saying? Personally, so well, if it's the only the woman aspect that he needs, then that's what he needs. It but, just depends on what hole needs to be voided. 
pause with the dude because yeah. if, if he just if he just pause. wants if he just wants the he don't care yeah. if he does if he just wants the woman part but you're entertaining but yeah. you don't have the woman part then it's like oh shit I gotta pick yeah. so it just comes down to which one now say he wants the woman part that you don't have but you're entertaining mm -hmm. he really loves you and then he's trying to go on this journey along with you that could kind of wear him out as well yeah I agree and you know it's funny because I had two people tell me the exact same thing verbatim years apart mm. like my um, daughter's dad told me one time, he was like, the truth be told, like, he's engaged and stuff now, but he's like, you know, truth be told us, I just feel like it's just too easy for you to leave. And then my ex, he said the same thing. And I was like, I just don't know what that means. Like, is that, like, what do you mean by that? Like, it, I feel like it's just too easy for you to leave. I don't know what that means. What you think that means? They said it's too easy for you to leave? Mm -hmm. I would need a little bit more context, but just going off a of blind eye. That's the only thing they said. I would say, do you kind of abandon situations quick? Like, if it's, like, something that's throwing you off or you're not with, then you're kind of like, I'm good. And it's a reason that you kind of feel that way is because you, you, you don't, you have, you good. Like, you have money, you have, you know, a crib and whatnot. So it's like, nigga, I don't really need to stick around. If I'm not with it, I'm good. Yeah. So do you abandon situations quick? Yeah, but I love hard. Like, if I'm abandoning the situation, it's not that it's not hurting me to abandon it. Mm -hmm. It's just that I love so hard and I hurt so deep. Like, when a person hurt me, I be feeling like my soul is being taken from me because I love so deeply. And so... Do the situations be that deep, though, Brooklyn? Shit. <laughs> like yeah! In the, in, the grand, in the grand scheme of things, hindsight. Okay. My last situation, we was together. Okay, we did not officially call it a relationship. But we was together every fucking day. The only time we wasn't together is if I was out of town. So why didn't you why didn't you put that pressure on or why didn't you just communicate and ask whether it was a relationship or not? I feel like I did. And I, I feel know like I felt like because you didn't. But the thing is, since you didn't. What is a man going to assume? Y'all not in a relationship. It's a different level of pressure. You know what pressure. he told me? What? He said that when um, I first started dealing with him. No. Before I started dealing with him, I had said that, like, I would never want to be with him. Uh-huh. And he was like, he believed me. And I felt like that was some manipulative ass shit. And on whose part? Yours or his? his? Hold on, Brooklyn. <laughs> it's manipulative because listen hold on ahead, maybe ahead, i ahead, said that ahead. before we start fucking okay. right but clearly you at my house every day we dealing with each other woo the woo clearly my feelings have changed and i did express that now did i say the words i want to be in a relationship but you knew what the fuck i wanted no no i just said this no. 30 no Brooklyn I, 30 <laughs> minutes ago then I just say this exact scenario I say when you go into it with y'all fucking and he sees that for what it is then that's what he's gonna see it as what it is you can't like him more afterwards and he just automatically gets oh she likes me now so now we're gonna be in a relationship it didn't start off with that and you didn't say you wanted otherwise ain't no way y'all started out fucking you started liking him more y'all started spending time with each other you think y'all in a relationship he don't Fuck. Because you ain't say nothing. Fuck, man. <sighs> no, it's fucked up. No, no, no. Ain't no, no, it's because... the position you put yourself okay, in. Okay, hold on. We started exclusively dating. We agreed to that. That's not a relationship. You That's know what? That's building towards. You know what? This is how I feel. Me and are full of shit, bro. Oh, my God. Me and are full <laughs> of shit. Because, okay, let's say it's building towards, right? <laughs> and yeah. then... And then I say, finally say it, oh, I want to be in a relationship. And he's like, I don't feel like I can give you what you want. Because the foundation was fucked. I don't feel like I can give you what you want. How was the foundation fucked? Because y'all started out fucking, right? Boom, okay. and that's what it was. So that's what y'all both saw it as in the beginning. But then your perception of it changed because you started liking him more. So then you're going from, you know what, scratch that. Let's flip it and make it into this. So y'all feel like I'm going to be single for the rest of my life? Absolutely not. Listen. <laughs> okay. It, because even my little, my little link that turned into me feeling for him, right? 
I feel like he he was he told me that too. He's like, you gotta tell a person what you want, but I'm just like, and I told him, and he was like, we gotta work towards that. You told him what you wanted with him, and he said, we I gotta said, work I towards that. I want to be in a relationship. <clears throat> well, how about this? How- I said I want to be in a relationship, and he said we gotta work towards that, right? And then. I be FaceTiming him sometimes, mm-hmm. and he don't answer my FaceTime. Mm-hmm. But then he looking at my Instagram story. Mm-hmm. He probably could have answered. He probably would have bet he. I mean, if you want to hear the truth, that's probably the truth. Uh, okay. But why can't he be? Y'all not in a committed relationship. But if I'm telling you that I'm trying to pursue you, and then, you know my homeboy said that I have a sense of entitlement. You don't say. I don't feel like that. Uh, I, I don't feel like I have a sense of entitlement. I feel like if you want me, you're going to pursue me. And I just feel like you need to drop everybody. Uh, if you want to pursue me, at, at minimum, niggas don't even know how to play it off. Right? If you calling me, I might not answer right back then, but I'm going to text you. You can't send me a text. You can't even call me back the next day. You looking at my Instagram, but you ain't going to call me back. You want to know why? Look at the reaction that it got out of you. I don't be acting like that to him. Of course not. We know you ain't going to do that, but we know it got your mind wandering. Mm. And what's that's going to do? Keep you around. I mean, listen, here, here's, how I, here's how I look at it. This whole thing. Fuck off. Here's how I look at that's it. That's how I look at it. How about... Okay, I don't, wanna, I don't mean that. No, nah, how about this? How about you look into this camera... Okay. And say what it is you want out of men and, you know, men that you're pursuing today. What do you want? What does Brooklyn want? I want to be happy. I want to feel like that. <laughs> no, no. Fuck happy and feelings. What What do you want solidified? Okay. What do I want solidified? Yes. Out of a man. Do you want, do you want a personal dildo? Do you want a relationship? Are I you want... looking for a husband? What do you want today? I'm looking for a husband. I want a husband. I want to get married. I want a man that's very family oriented. I want a man who is willing to give me reinsurance. I want a man who's willing to build my mental too. I want a man who won't will let me be a woman. So here's what you do. Okay. You say that shit from day one. <laughs> you okay, don't you okay. don't you don't get your rocks off. And then two months later, try to say, that's what I want. You say that shit from day one, and that will alleviate a lot of bullshit time. Okay. You're a right. lot. My friends be telling me that, and I be like, they be like, you really be talking your shit any other time to everybody else, mm-hmm. but I don't know why when it come to men, like, you don't just be real. It's great to give advice to other people, but, you know, when yeah. it's time for us to jump in the water, it's a different story. But say that shit off bucks, yeah. and that will... Alleviate a lot of these situations that seem yeah. to be a, a a repetitive, you know, thing with you. If you say it off bucks, then that will scatter them away off bucks. You won't go through months yeah. and feelings and fucking and orgasms and shit. You'll just get it out the way off bucks. That's my problem. That's my problem. I don't say it off the rip. And honestly, sometimes I don't know what's wrong with me. I do. What? Nothing's wrong with you. You just got to communicate better yeah. and you got to be realistic with what you want. I got to be bucks. honest. Yeah. Pull a card. Is it my turn? Yes, yeah, your turn. You pull a card. Um, that one ain't a good one. <laughs> that shit sucks too. I have more downstairs. Are they not spicy enough? I These didn't... ain't spicy. Okay, I should... need some spicy shit. Should I get some more? This shit talking about what was your first kiss like? Who gives a fuck? All right, say less. Yeah, I'll get some more. Some... I didn't, I didn't want to go <laughs> ham Have you on. ever ghosted someone? Yeah, yeah. of course. All right. Mm-hmm. Have at it. Deeper. Straight to deeper. Are you a freak? I'm a fake freak. <laughs> I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this fake freak shit. Go ahead and read. Go ahead and read the card because I'm. I'm not doing it. Go ahead and read the card. Name a location. <laughs> well, just just pick until you you know find something you like. How often do you think about sex? Every day, every day, every hour. Because is is that what fake freaks do? Fake freaks. 
constantly think about sex. I just like sex. Women, y'all, y'all are bigger freaks than men. Y'all have a higher sex drive than men. Like y'all think uh, about sex more than men. Having a high sex drive and being freaky ain't the same. It's not. What's the it's difference? It's not. Because I'm having a high sex drive is you like fucking, you like penetration. Okay. Being freaky, mm-hmm. you kind of go outside of just the normal being in the mm-hmm. bed or whatever like that. I feel like a freak just, you know. Be on some other shit, yeah. doing little tricks, doing little, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really freaky. I'm shy. Mm. I'm you, actually really shy. You just think about sex a lot and like sex and want to get yours off, but you're shy. No yeah. wrong with you it. You know the problem is? Mm. I realize what my problem is. The problem is I need to masturbate before I go on dates. That might help. You feel me? Because the thing is I be going months without having sex. Mm. So I be like, damn, you look good. I want to fuck. Mm. You have a you have a smash on the first link. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're adults. Why not? You know what I did with her? What? I can't say. That. Why would you? I want to say this so bad, but why would you reel me in? Both of them are gonna see it, and my life is gonna go to shit. I know what you're so. about to say. I know exactly what you're about <laughs> no, to say. No, 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 no. You don't know what I'm about to say, but I really, honestly, you don't know what I'm about to say because this shit is so far fetched. It's so it's so out the way. And it's not, I fuck two people on the same night. It's not that. Oh, I thought that's what you were No, to say. I know it's what you thought. But I'm going to tell you off camera. All right. Yeah. I don't want to blow up my life behind a podcast. You kind of answered this already. Do you ever feel nervous or anxious before having sex? Yes, I'm super shy. Yeah. I'm so shy. So you're shy. So do Unless you. I'm under an influence. Uh, do you ever like initiate like with sex? Like, do you ever take control at all? Like, does a dude have to do it off bucks? Everything off bucks, especially the first um, time. No, I'm I'm actually the one who dominates. To be honest, somebody told me that I need to learn how to let somebody else take control. But I like being dominant. That shit is sexy when women dominate. I like, listen, shit. like in the household, yes, we're dominant creatures, men and all that. But when a chick takes control mm-hmm. and dominates when it comes to sex, that shit is sexy. Like, it is. women be thinking they just got to lay back and let everything happen. Nah, like, take control. Like, grab his shit. You know what I'm saying? Pull him in to kiss him. Grab his shit. Reach in his pants. Pull his shit out. You know what I'm saying? Wild out on him off bucks. Like, that shit will turn him on. I'm trying to tell y'all. One thing about it, if you don't know how to fuck and you fucking with me, I'm gonna teach you. And one thing I can't As say should. is the last man, not the last man, but the man before that. Mm-hmm. I fucking taught him how to fuck, and I know he fuck way better now. Yeah. Oof. As I say, he's he's using it on other women, so you know. I hope you're comfortable with that. Take that kiss out. I ain't mean. To- <laughs> <laughs> I was getting in my car. <laughs> Nah, it was sexy. Keep with it. No, 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 no. It was sexy. It was sexy. Take that out, but you know who you are. <laughs> fuck you too, though, because you be playing with me. It's a lot but of fuck yous. It is because people be playing with me. It's because you give them the controller. You know what, too? I feel like I move a little fast. I know what I want. I say what I want. I want you to give it to me right then. So that means you got to cut off everybody. You talking about, I said that I wasn't feeling that at that. Okay, I'm feeling it now. That's what I want now. What's up? I'm calling you now. You ain't answer my call. You with a bitch. So you more invested in a bitch, but you telling me that I'm supposed to be telling you that I want you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? That's how I feel. I'm telling you now that I'm trying to be in a relationship with you, but you with a bitch and ignoring my car. What did you tell him before, though? It don't matter. Yes, it you told do. me to tell you now, and I'm telling you now that that's what I want. Okay, so I'm telling you this is what it is. I want. I want a relationship. I want to be. So with So he's you. supposed to drop everything, drop all his holes, and abide by your request. That's what you're saying. You want to be with me or not? <laughs> Not this a, is he, what I'm saying. Well, he, he he does it in the same way that you do. He likes it. He likes it how it was at first when y'all were okay, just cordial. Then but, fuck you. Well, let me say this: ain't nobody just gonna drop all their hoes like that. Why nobody not? does that, men Why or not? women. Why not? Y'all always keep a few lunches. I mean, in the at fridge. least pretend. You can't even answer my Facetime. People be busy, Brooklyn. Or he would have never biddy. One of the two. He would a bitch. Okay, so what? Don't you got a stable? Nope. I ain't fucking nobody else but him. I ain't say fucking. 
entertaining. Okay, so what? All right, and find someone else, to, find someone else to entertain I ain't you. ignoring his calls for him. So no matter what you're doing, so you can be with another dude and you will still pick up. I might not pick up right then, I'm going to call back. All right. It's the same difference. He takes too long to call back. I don't... I... Listen, I I'm rooting saying... for you. I'm rooting for you. Because <laughs> you're cool as shit. You're funny as shit. You have been completely transparent and honest on this podcast. And um, I mean, I think we, you know, have struck what one of the main issues is. I'm tired is... of coming off as the homegirl. Then stop coming off as the homegirl. You I laid it out how. perfect. I just showed you how. What you said into that camera 15 minutes ago, verbatim, on the first link or date with a dude, that's what you lay out. That is legit how you do it. Okay. You might have to go a few months without getting your, your kitty scratched, but I mean, what do you want? Do you want Maybe to get your- Maybe I should post it on my Instagram. Should I go ahead and let everybody know? Do you want to get your you kitty see- scratched, but your mind is in a conundrum or- do you go, you know what I'm saying? Like, or you can still get your kitty scratched, but just let it be known off bucks. And then from there, you can go on about if you want to fuck or not. But just let it be known off bucks first. So I need to have, keep my good fuck buddy and then they at the same time yes. so I can get my rocks off. But then. I'm not I'm not ready to be a little Steve Harvey and tell you to not fuck. That is not me. Oh. But I think having a good friends with benefit, a solid one where there's no feelings involved, y'all know what it is. Mm-hmm. Why are you still looking for love? It's respectable. Because yeah. once you find once you find that love, that's when it's like, okay, fuck buddy. I found a person I'm really with. We gotta stop doing what we do. I've had one of those before. You know what? And I, I respected had, it when she when she found I've the dude. had one like that and we have we would fuck on and off like if I was in a relationship, we wouldn't fucking. If I was, we weren't. Yeah. You know, but then he got into a relationship mm-hmm. where he invited me to his crib. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, mm-hmm. she was there. Mm-hmm. Did it go down? And I was like, you know, I'm beyond that type of timing. Mm-hmm. And she, he was like, she don't care. She made me breakfast. She made me breakfast. Swingers. He was like, you hungry? And not. And I was like, before I came, he was like, you hungry? I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was like, okay, cool. Thinking like, maybe we're going to go to breakfast or something before, mm-hmm. you know. So I get there. She cooked. Mm-hmm. Did they turn you out? She asked me, are you hungry? Mm-hmm. I said, no. He said, yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't, yeah, you were, you didn't know what was going on. That's why you said no. Did they, I was hungry. Did they turn you out? No, they didn't turn me out. But I feel like they tried to tag team me. Yeah, they were swingers. Swingers. Sometimes I be feeling like that. I'm just trying to fuck for me to the slut. Yeah, <laughs> but think- I'm I'm shy, so. All right, she's a fake freak. I'm shy, so and I also don't believe in. If it's my nigga, I don't want to have a threesome with you. I pretend I'll play around and shit. But That's why side dudes get the best fucking, benefits. Mm-hmm, they do <laughs> because shit is, shit is crazy. inside bitches too though. Some niggas is more freaks with they side bitch than they are with they real bitch. No. No. Yes. Yes. Well, it depends on yes. if she's nasty enough. It de- no. It's it not on us. It's on, on the, the chick. Man. No, it it's on, on the, the chick. Because if the wifey dry, if she don't be, if she only gives head because if 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 he if she's giving head because she has to, we feel that shit. If the side bitch adores my dick, then of course I'm a wild out on her more. It comes mm, down to the chick. I guess. What was you I about guess. to say? I have I have talked to somebody that I was screwing, and he was like. When it comes to like his main woman, he was like, I just feel like she's never gonna get like that that side of me. Like when it comes to being super, super freaky, he's more reserved with his woman. Did he say why? I need to know why. His I need to know why. The chick he was dating ain't reserved at all. Mm-hmm. She is freaked out. But for him, he just not he just hold her to a different standard. It's no different than some men out there who we all know who this person is. Don't want they woman giving head. Wait, to him? He said he don't like to see her like that. Like I'm, I'm gonna be honest though. The person that I, the person that the, the person that I currently would just stop dealing with, 
He wasn't a big head fan either. Like he'll he'll give me head, but like I he just never seemed into head like that. He never like tried to some men would try to get you to, you know, go ahead and do it or whatever like that. Like if I was giving him head, I had to initiate that. He was never gonna initiate that. He never did. The sucks is the bee's knees. I don't know. I, I don't know what's Everybody a, different. I, I, some yeah, people not yeah, everyone's into different. It. Everyone's different. Like everyone's I different. got some niggas that give me good I ain't saying some niggas. I've had a man that gave me good dick but give me horrible head, so I don't want no head for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean I do hear like with women, like I've like I'll ask like more frequently, like women are like, I mean, head is cool, but like just like dick and I'm perfectly fine. I, I could use a, a vibrator. Yeah. You know another thing I hate? What? Man, stop fucking pulling out vibrators that you keep at home. Because that means you done pulled that vibrator out on another bitch. And I know you nasty ass niggas ain't going and washing that shit. So stop fucking doing that. You mixing juices. What this bitch got a disease? Mm. Not only are you passing it along, mm. but you don't give a fuck. Mm. That's good advice, actually. Stop doing that shit. Yeah. I had somebody do that shit to me, try to pull out a vibrator. Is you dumb? Mm. You ain't just using this motherfucker on me. You been had this shit. You had this shit before I was here. Yeah, I've done that before, but I've watched it. I had like the dick ring, like with the vibrator at the bottom, but I've watched it before. Did you watch it every time? No. Every time I had a new chick that I use it with? Yeah. Mm. I think. No, you didn't. He know he didn't. I don't know. I think. Y'all got to stop that shit. That shit is nasty. But and I then y'all be trying it. to hit a bitch on a drunk night. What do you mean? I got to be paying attention to what you're doing. So if I'm fucking and all oh, of a sudden I feel a vibrator, uh, now you didn't put somebody else's juices on my pussy. I see what you're saying. You was burnt the fuck out. Hey, niggas. No, you don't. <laughs> I love, you, you I love, love men. Love I love us. black men. Yeah. And then sometimes I be thinking like, is my husband another race? But it can't be. Because I love me some black men. I can't picture you with another race. I can I I, I just can't picture I need it. me a black man. I need me a black man that can stand and make me just feel like a Okay. Just make you melt. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't I don't wanna feel hard. I don't wanna be hard. No, I don't no wanna feel does. like I gotta be hard. No like does. y'all be bluffing when y'all say y'all don't mind like this I'm Gabrielle super Union sensitive. Shit. I'm yeah. super sensitive. Like I wanna be baby. Just get it together, man. Like, y'all got to do better. And women, we got to do better, too. We got to do better, too. This is what I feel like. Is it going to be like... Let me start up. This is how I feel. Is it going to be, I'm all about the bag, or do we really want love? Because sometimes I feel like we get... Ask yourself that, Brooklyn. I want both. This is what I'm saying. The the older guy that I was telling you about, Mm -hmm. if he would do for me, like another nigga that I fuck with do for me, mm-hmm. he would be the perfect package. And he would get all of me, the best parts of me. But he wants to be in a relationship before he do for me. You see what I'm saying? But he want to fuck before he do for me too. So it's not going to work. So he wants to go from fucking to relationship to doing for you. He want to be in a relationship. He even talked about marriage. But why you can't... I feel like he that, know what I want. I told him what he want. And he just want to do it his way. Just do what I said. Hold on. Hold <laughs> up. Hold up. Hold up. I feel like we've been playing this game. You say like, what you want. He said what he want. But you you think he just wants to do it his way. Who does that sound like, Brooklyn? Not me. Yes. The no, fuck it does. It does. <laughs> you don't no, tell me about doesn't. five different stories <laughs> that go exactly like that. No, no, yes. no. He kept it real Y'all from tell the me. beginning. Y'all tell me, does that, does that sound like Brooklyn am I, or am I tripping? No. All right. No. Okay. He told me of off the rip what he wanted. And I just, you know, I slowly but surely told him, like, let's get down to it. I like stuff. I want shit. I want stuff. You feel me? Like, I want to go take trips and all that good shit and stuff, but I want things. Like, I'm still in my young era, and I want to, like, explore the world. I want to have fun. I want to fucking shop till I drop, and I want everything that don't even fucking matter in this world. And when I'm 40 years old, none of that shit going to matter, but I want it. You feel me? I want to mm-hmm. experience it. I want it now. Yeah. So, if you older and you dating a young bitch, 
you cannot put off you I know you want to her to learn the lessons that you learned earlier and all this bullshit but let her have fun you making the money you got to the place where she wants to be or you know what I'm saying she want her man to be let her enjoy that like you know what I'm saying let her experience that life that you have you wanted to experience it at one time you mm-hmm. did mm-hmm. you you worked hard you experienced that life so let her do it too Stop trying to make her grow up faster. Listen, you want to date a twenty-eight year old bitch, and you fifty. She a twenty year old eight, a twenty eight year old girl. Okay. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't care how mature she is. I don't care how much she got her shit together. Cause we making money younger. We get, we, you know, what I'm saying we doing a damn thing younger. That's just what it is. That's just the time we in. But she's still a twenty eight year girl your old girl you feel mm-hmm. me like she's still trying to see the world she still want things she still got aspiration yeah. aspirations she still like get excited about shit that don't excite you no more because yeah. you didn't live so i feel like i hate a older man who got a thing for a younger chick but don't want to play the game how it go you know what this is stop trying to act like you don't and i don't give a fuck how long you want to play it Another nigga over here getting fucked while you over here trying to play lolly dotty. Mm-hmm. It's just what it is. I don't care how much money you got because it's another nigga with money mm-hmm. who gonna fuck, who gonna pay. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not saying pay, but who gonna do for you. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Like, and they ain't thinking twice about it. Yeah. What you want to do? Want to be a baller? No. Y'all, y'all want to know, <laughs> fellas, what do y'all want to do? I mean, you this- know who you you know who you look like. I was trying to. I'm like, who the fuck does she look like? You look like uh, uh, you resemble two people. Okay. In the best ways, because one of these names don't take it the hard way. Oh. Lord. But you resemble Black China and Sierra. I get Sierra and mm-hmm. Kyla Pratt. Mm-hmm. I've, I've Kyla gotten Pratt Sierra and I think maybe Kyla Pratt without the makeup. I can see but, Kyla Pratt, but yeah. I, I see a little bit of Black China. Just the the best the best parts mm-hmm. of her. Believe me, because even before her surgeries and whatnot, she looked really good. So the best parts of her and Sierra for one. sure. I've heard Sierra, but for the life of me, I do not see where they get in Sierra from. Nah, I'm seeing it. I've heard that, and I've heard if you see Cynthia Bailey, you gotta look her up. Look up Cynthia Bailey. Cynthia Bailey. Now Cynthia Bailey, I really could be her daughter. I literally, that's the only one I saw from the rip. But I see Kyla Pratt too. Cynthia. And I've heard Tatiana Ali. Tatiana Ali, who that? I just gotta look at him and see. Cynthia Bailey. Mm-hmm. She cold. She from the Housewives. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that a little bit. Tatiana Ali. We're gonna do one more card before we get up out of here. Okay. What you got for me? Do you have? <clears throat> Let me correct myself. Let me get myself together. Do you have a sexual fantasy that you want to act out in real life? Hmm. Um. Nothing OD. I could think of like two right now. Mm. One of which being like I've never like like really really tied up a chick before. I like doing it. Like I've done like handcuffs. I've done like you know tying up the wrist like to the bed and all that shit. Like, but I never like really like really really tied up a chick and like she just. I love that. Yeah, and she just love every part of it. Like I've done that. her being in that submissive state just makes her melt. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The more each second, more and more. You said you've done it. What okay. do you like? What do you like about it? So, I've not been tied up, but I have like done. I had a dude who was into like dominatrix stuff, and mm-hmm. I love being dominated. Mm-hmm. Like. Take control. I don't want to take control. I want mm. to be dominated. And <laughs> he had me get on my knees and crawl to him. Mm-hmm. And I just, it, it, I can't go into detail, but yeah, yeah. it was just like, sounds I like love it took, that yeah, shit. It sounds, like it took, it sounds like it took you somewhere. It did. Yeah. But he also tried to whoop me with a belt and I ain't like that. Mm. So I got my, <laughs> I got my limits. <laughs> Grown ass woman, you even whoop me with a goddamn. <laughs> oh shit! I had to tell him. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was cool. You at hit first, me one more time with that like, motherfucking. Right, <laughs> you like to be slapped? Uh, I, I don't mind that, but don't slap me too hard. Like, 
Don't make me feel like I'm being abused. Yeah. Gotcha. I've I've been choked so hard that I felt like I I was like mm. you're 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 killing me. Cold red. Die. Yeah, like bananas. Tap on pineapples. Yeah. I don't like it. Pineapples. That's what I meant. <laughs> All right, last question of the day. Okay. Day by day. What's the weirdest porn you've ever gotten off to? Don't lie, neither. I like the pleads of fifth. I don't. I don't. I don't want to um, answer that. Can we get another question? <laughs> I can't say. That must be some weird shit. It was so yeah. Weird. It was. I was just curious, but it was weird at uh-huh. the same time. But. So see, boom, someone just FaceTime you and you're not able to answer. Now, this is more professional reason why you can't answer. Now, say the dude was on a podcast. This ain't a man. Okay, well, say the dude was on a podcast that you hit him up and he ain't answered okay. right then and there. You can't trip out about that. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to go back down that hole. All right. No, that's a... Uh, Mm, so this is like hypothetical me and you are in a relationship Mm -hmm. if you could invite one celebrity to have a threesome with us who would you choose I don't want to get a drug if someone if someone that you thought of it's cool if someone that you thought of who'd you think of I'm gonna stay on the safe side and not the honest side. 